Alright, welcome back. This clip is about Punnett squares. It's really inheritance part two. So this should come after the clip I just talked about, which is uh, dominance and recessive, simple dominance and simple recessive alleles. Alright, uh, this one I titled Punnett squares. What are the chances my child will inherit my traits? And, and these are, this is used for two things. It's used for people who want to have children and you want to know the likelihood of the inheritance of particular combinations of alleles. Will they get alleles? Yes. What, which alleles will they get? That is the question here. All right. And it's also used to look back into your family history to decide what is, or determine what is your genotype um, based on what your parental genotypes are. Now, to do this, I'm going to start out with, I'm going to return to this terminology here, where we have big A, big A, we have big A, little a, and little a, little a. Practice the terms, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, heteroz homozygous recessive, okay? homozygous recessive. Yeah, it's hard to get those, so practice saying them out loud so you remember. All right? Now, we don't pay too much attention here to the phenotypes of individuals. We're looking primarily at the genotypes. But what we want to know is if two people, for example, who are heterozygotes, they mate, produce an offspring, what's the probability that offspring will also be a heterozygote like them? Or what's the probability there'll be some other genotype, like homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive, right? Well, we know that some of these alleles are going to come from the female side. She's going to give only one allele, but she has two different options, all right? So let's say she's going to be, we're going to make big A, big A, big A, little a, cross with big A, little a, all right? That's our cross. Here we go. I'm going to make this box like this, four square box. If the female is big A, little a, let's make this her, okay? She can give one of these two alleles, but because she has exactly uh, the same number of each, she has a, she can give them with equal probability. There's a 50% chance she'll give the big A and a 50% chance she'll give little a. No telling which one. And so let's put big A here and little a here. And the male is the same story over here on this side. He can either give a big A or a little a. Now, if dominant alleles were more likely to be inherited, then we couldn't really just evenly place these in two boxes because one would be more likely than the other. But that isn't the case. Because of independent assortment and crossing over, there's really a, 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 an even split chance, 50-50, of which of these she will pass on and which of these he will pass on. So what this box does, it gives us all the different combinations of the different alleles in the offspring. It also tells us the frequency or how common each one of them is. Now it happens that every box is equally common, okay? So these two alleles come together, they make this pattern. These two alleles come together, they make this pattern. These two alleles come together, they make this pattern. And these two alleles come together and they make this pattern. Because every box is equally common or equally likely to occur, but some genetic, genetic combinations are actually occupying more than one box. And you can see that here, that this group here and these two, this genotype happens twice here. So the most likely outcome for the child will be the big A, little a, the heterozygous combination. All right. It turns out, though, that there are other possibilities. So it could be... Uh, little a, little a, but only one box, and uh, that's only a quarter of the time, and it could be a big A, big A, and that's the other quarter of the time, all right? So the probability, which I write like this, I'm just going to write probability of the child being big A, big A, is equal to 0.25, or you could also write a quarter, one-fourth, all right? The probability of, a, of the child being little a, little a, is equal to the same thing. And the probability of the, the child being this heterozygote state is actually equal to 
or one half. Right? So it turns out the most likely outcome is heterozygous from this particular mating. Now, what we can do with this is we can go back and say something, we can work backwards and say if you have a child that is little a and little a, for example, how do we know um, what the parental genotypes are? And we can work backward, and the thing is we don't really know for sure. So if you have a child that's little a, little a, it could be that both parents are little a, little a, or almost any combination, as long as each parent has a little a to give. So one of the parents cannot be big A, big A, for that case, all right? So these are called, this is called a Punnett square, and the purpose of this is to calculate the probability of a particular genotype being formed in the zygote from a mating, okay? We've got a little bit more to add to this in, in your, uh, now you can remember, I can say it, the easiest way to do this is do it with every possible combination here. Because if you, if you get this one, you're like, okay, well, what if someone gives you a different combination here of things to mate, like a big A, big A, a little a, a little a. Will you be able to do that? Well, you should be able to. So in your case, I would just make another Punnett square. And I'd race, but I'm, uh, all right, there we go. That was easy. Yeah, squares are easy to draw, okay? In this case, the male is going to be big A, big A, and the female is little a, little a. And so if you want to do this on your own, stop your video now. I'll fill it in. Big A, little a, big A, little a, big A, little a, big A, little a. Now, the only possible outcome is a heterozygote. That's kind of cool. So if one of your parents is homozygous dominant, and the other is homozygous recessive, every offspring will be heterozygous, has to be. What's cool then is that they all have the same phenotype. So if you, uh, if you applied this to hair color, it's not a strict interpretation, but let's if you apply this to hair color, a dark brown haired person and a bronze haired person, what you would end up getting is offspring that are all brown haired, but they would also all be heterozygous. So the next generation could potentially have sort of light hair again. Now remember, for humans, the rules are not strictly accurate um, for how they're inherited. There are some other twists in there about how symbol dominance works when it's inherited. Um, so uh, most of the time it works this way. It doesn't mean that if you are a, if you are a blonde-haired child from, from, from a brown-haired and a blonde-haired parents that you're that those aren't your parents, okay? It can happen that way, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about some of those uh, deviations from this later, all right? That's the Punnett square. Do it for big A, little a, cross these two and look at the phenotypes, cross these two, we just did that, cross these two and look at the phenotypes, do all the different combinations and take a look at how the different offspring look both in their, in their phenotypes and in their genotypes. All right, good luck.